Okay, many people have got questions at this time, um, global pandemic going on. And one of the main questions a lot of people are asking is, is this something that God has allowed? Is it something that is a response to humanity's sinfulness, wickedness? How would you kind of answer that question? I think it's a really interesting question that people are asking about, actually, where does this come from? If God is all powerful, God is all loving, God is all knowing, then how does this thing happen? I guess as we look through scripture, we see time and time again in history, there are times when God does send calamity. You look at the story of Noah, when uh, God's judgment comes upon the earth, but Noah is saved. But as I read scripture, I think in the New Testament, we enter a new understanding of what it is to be in relationship with God, to have a covenant with God. I don't think from my point of view that this is God's judgment upon us, but it's a result of the choice that each of us has made to go our own way. So from the very beginning of the Genesis story, everything is created good. And yet man and woman choose to go their own direction. They choose to rebel against God. And we are living in the consequences of that. And part of that is sin and is death and is sickness. And part of that is pandemic as well. That'd be my thoughts. What about you, Mark? What are your thoughts on the whole thing? Yeah, again, as you said, Andy, it's a very interesting and relevant question. I know a lot of people are wrestling with it um, at this, this time. I mean, for me, God is a good God. God is a loving father. So, um, you know, it's, it's weighing that reality, which scripture teaches very strongly with, you know, what we are facing and what we are living through um, at, at the moment. And, you know, I think the question that I know a lot of my friends are asking and even people, Christians are asking is if that's true, God is that good father, just maybe to push it a little bit further, mm. then how does he allow something to happen like this, even if it is a result of our sinfulness or our waywardness? Now, how yeah. would you reconcile that good father, Abba, daddy, with, again, the reality of suffering and people dying and all the fallout from this pandemic? Yeah, this is one of those kind of questions that comes up time and time again as we look back for even the last few years. You think about the tsunami that took place uh, in Sri Lanka and the surrounding area. People ask, well, where was God in all of this? And all those kind of questions that how can God allow this much suffering? I think from my point of view that God is all loving, God is all caring, God is all powerful, and yet he has given us this choice, and because of that, we live in the repercussions. And the repercussions are great, they are massive, and it helps put into perspective, I think, just what it means to be out of relationship with God. But I don't think that God is then for just distant and far away, but actually God wants to enter into the mess and the brokenness. The whole idea of the Christmas story that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, what Emmanuel means. But actually, God wants to actually meet us in the difficulty, meet us in the brokenness, meet us in the, in the pain and the suffering. And perhaps for many of us, we become so comfortable just living our life and forgetting about everything else that God is using this moment, even though it's very difficult, he wants to use it for actually his purposes to actually restore what it is for us to be in relationship with him. And that ultimately, we have the idea that Jesus came to earth and that he went to the cross, that he endured the most horrific suffering and pain. And he actually utters those words from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So there's a sense that actually even in the brokenness and the hurt and the pain that we're encountering at this time, that God wants to speak into that, that God wants to be close to us, that God wants to draw us back to him again. And I think that through time and time again, through the scripture stories as well, you find that in very difficult times when there is uh, battles and people get killed or where there is um, kind of all kind of plagues, uh, in those difficult times, God is often drawing his people closer to him again. But the choice is, how will we respond during these difficult times? Mm. That's, that's, that's great. Just one, one final element to that, this whole arching kind of God's sovereignty, kind of has he allowed this pandemic? Just one final kind of um, side question I think a lot of people are asking is, what role does the devil or Satan play in this? Is this, you know, where, where does the devil and Satan mm. fit into that whole sovereign God kind of picture what would you say about that people a lot of people are asking you know where's yeah. the devil where's satan in this i think for, for my, how i understand scripture i mean it's really important thing to see the idea that the bible isn't just a list of different books it actually tells one big narrative that explains the history from the very very beginning of creation to actually when christ will return in the book of revelation and something the big story which helps us understand how we understand what's going on in this moment and for me in that genesis story um, Adam and Eve, they choose to go their own direction. And what God has done previously, he's given them the authority over the earth. He's given them a place of privilege to work in partnership with him. And yet Adam and Eve have chosen, rather than to work alongside God, they chose to give some of that authority over to Satan. 
they choose to actually allow him into the picture. They allow evil and sin and the mess that we're in now to enter into the picture. And so for me, there's a challenge by we've given Satan authority and Satan has ultimately lost the battle. We know that in the book of Revelation, Jesus will return and he will be a, known as king for, by all of mankind, by all of humankind. But until that time, we live in the sense of the now, the not yet. Jesus' death and his resurrection brought about the kingdom of God. We can know God's presence here and now in these difficult times. There's also a sense that it's the not yet. Things are not yet perfect. Things are not yet fully redeemed. The whole of creation is crying out to be restored fully to how it should be again. And we're living in this time now where Jesus has, has risen from the dead. We're living that victory. But at the same time, the world is a mess until he finally returns in the book of Revelation. Yeah. That would be my understanding. How about yourself, Mark? What do you think about that in terms of the role of Satan at this time? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's really helpful, Andy. Thank you. Uh, and, and very biblical. And, you know, I think the whole big picture thing is such a helpful um, kind of handle to have on this because we can become so focused on the here and now, you know, 2020 without that kind of breadth of, of history and, and, and scripture. So, I mean, I think the only thing that, that, that I would, would add to this is, you know, that God and, and, and Jesus Christ through the cross and the empty tomb is the one who has all authority in heaven and on earth. He's the one who is all powerful. And, mm-hmm. and while Satan can make a mess sometimes in this world and, and create confusion and, and hurt and pain, that Jesus is that one who has defeated Satan, defeated the grave. Um, and on one day there is that new heaven and, and new earth. And, and even in death, there is that, that victory which is a place without suffering and without mm. pain and without, you know, um, a pandemic. There's a place of, of, of pure joy and peace. So, yeah, I think just that reminding ourselves that though Satan is real, um, Jesus is the one who has that authority. Absolutely. And we, we know how the story ends. And the, the, the yes. sad thing is sometimes as Christians, we forget how the story ends. And it's so important yeah. to remember, actually, we have the victory. There is that picture of yeah. that new heaven and new earth where every tear is wiped away. What a stunning picture that God kind of leaves us yeah. with of this yeah. is how the story ends. So in this moment right now, things are tough, things are hard. No matter who we are, we've actually been quite blessed to think in the West of having quite easy lives in many ways. But as you see what's happening around the globe in many different places, even now with this pandemic, there are some places in the world where there are horrendous things happening. But even in the midst of that, Christians are standing firm because they have this sense of they are part of a much bigger story. They know how it ends and that death isn't the final thing. Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you. 